a lot of times you buy herbs from the grocery store and you only need, you know, maybe a handful at the most. What do you do with the rest of them? And, you know, herbs are not cheap. So, you know, you use that little bit and then what do you do with the rest? Do you, you know, you're probably not going to make that dish again anytime soon before the herbs go bad. But you don't need to throw them away and you don't necessarily need to force yourself to figure out how to eat them because you can regrow them, which is the whole point of today's session. So, oops. Okay. Next slide, please. All right. So, why should you, you know, why should I propagate my grocery store herbs? One is nutritious food for the body, beautiful food for the soul. It's free food and it's good food. You have something, I mean, the plants are, are beautiful and they're nutritious and they boost your immune system. Medicinal applications, before there was traditional medicine like Tylenol and Advil, everything was made from plants. And you can have access to, you know, traditional home remedies right there in your kitchen, on your back porch, in your yard. If you regrow your own herbs, you have control over how these herbs are produced. Because even if you buy them organic, who knows what happens between the field and the grocery store. But if you propagate the herbs your, yourself, you have the opportunity to control exactly what goes into them and how they're taken care of. And, you know, if you don't use the herbs, that's a waste of money. So if you propagate them and grow your own, you're saving money because once you buy them, you basically should never have to buy them again if you take care of them. So next slide. And like I said, Grow, re, growing plants in general is beauty and nourishment, especially if they're uh, herbs and vegetables and fruit. So this, the quote that I said before um, came from somebody's description of horticulture, which is a study of plants. Horticulture is the art and science of producing nutritious food for the body and beautiful food for the soul. And by growing your own herbs, you give yourself more opportunity to add fresh herbs to your diet. And adding fresh herbs to your diet will diversify your, uh, your food intake as well as, you know, a little, a little something different that you probably wouldn't normally have. Next slide, please. So herbs were the first medicine. And all herbs have some medicinal properties that will boost your immune system and you can also use them to combat different ailments and injuries. Um, there, for example, there are weeds, in, quote unquote, weeds in your yard that you can use for, you know, if you cut yourself or if, you know, if you, all, if you have chest congestion, there are herbs for that. So the, the herbs that we're talking about are, are the like basic culinary herbs, but there are all kinds of herbs and they, they can all be used in, in your good health, especially, in, especially with the pandemic going around right now. The more you can boost your immune system, the better. Uh, next slide, please. So, you know, how clean are the herbs that you buy? We don't know, but if you grow your own, you can make sure that whatever goes into them is, is of your choosing. So, you know, you might not care about organic. You might care about organic. Um, there are other, you know, do you want to use uh, plant, uh, animal byproducts? Do you not? Um, you know, do you want to use your own compost tea? Do you want to, uh, do you just want to let them grow wild and see what happens? It, that's all your choice once you start propagating your own herbs. Next slide. And at the end of the day, have you seen how much herbs cost? They're expensive. It's, and considering how easy it is to propagate your own, 
there's no reason you should be you should be shelling out good money for something that you could have that you could produce yourself with very little effort um as long as you have a cu- at least three hours of sunlight you can grow herbs in your house so if you propagate them pro- propagate them yourself you only have to buy them once and keep the rest of the money in your pocket you diversify your diet for free you know add a little parsley add a little sage add a little whatever whenever you want to and wh- whenever the notion strikes you and you can have as much as you want when you need it and there's less waste because once the plant starts growing the plant you know you cut off what you need and the plant keeps growing but if you buy them already cut you have a very limited amount of time before they're going bad. Then nobody wants to throw away food. So, next slide, please. So what we're what we're doing is called propagation, and propagation is creating new plants from existing plants. And there are two ways to do that: sexual propagation and asexual propagation. Sexual propagation is from seeds, pollen, egg come together to make a seed and then you you know every everybody I think understands you know how plants come from seeds but asexual propagation is when you take a living plant and you cut off one of the vegetative pieces of that plant so vegetative meaning one of the green parts of the plant and root from from that vegetative piece so the vegetative piece will will produce an identical plant to the one that you that you took it from sexual propagation you know you're mixing dna each seed came from the same pollen and egg but the mix of dna is different every time um like your you know like your siblings you all came from you all came from the same parents but each one of you looks different you you know different color hair different color eyes you know different shape whatever um but with asexual propagation you would each one would come out exactly like the parent so next slide and so plant anatomy we need to understand plant anatomy if we want to propagate if we're going to do asexual propagation and in this case we're doing what is called a cutting so we're going to cut something off the plant root it and make a new plant so i don't you should be able to see pretty good but if not so i'll also show you on so here this is a piece of oregano here so you've got the leaves coming out here and everywhere on the stem that the leaves come out is called a node and those nodes are where the new roots are going to come from and in between in between the stem and the and this one is a little bit too productive so in between you can see this so in between the 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 leaf and the stem you see another little leaf those are called uh vegetative buds or axillary buds those are um especially on tomatoes when that where those come out those are identical to the mother plant as well so leaves come out of the stem and the axillary but it's where the roots would come out or new leaves would come out. And does anybody have any questions about the anatomy that is because when you're taking cuttings, what you need to understand is where the nodes are, which is where the leaves come out. And you also want to know about the growth tip. The growth tip is the top of the top. If you want bushier plants, you cut off the growth tip. Um, if you want tall, if you want them to just grow straight up, you would leave it there. Okay. 
So we'll just keep moving on. Um, and there'll be more questions at the, more time for questions at the end if you have any. So next slide. And in this picture, you see it's labeled hardwood and softwood. So when you're taking uh, cuttings, that's something you need to pay attention to. You want to you want to take the cutting from a green stem. In in hardwood, it's not like hardwood as in you know like oak or maple. It's it just means that a um, it just means that an herb has gotten has gotten woody and it feels like wood, it looks like wood. Um, and if you do have to take a, a hardwood cutting, because sometimes, you know, that's all that's, all that's left, um, you would use rooting hormone. But if you take a softwood cutting, you don't need to. And in this, and today we're not gonna be um, doing any hardwood cutting. We're just gonna be taking uh, the softwood cut, soft, you know, tender green cutting so that, we don't, so, you know, it's green. It's not, uh, it's not hard and woody, which I'll, yeah, the hard and woody, I'll show you with the uh, rosemary, but I'm going to use the mouse to show. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually show you, I'm going to show you live where to cut it. Um, And on and on this uh, example, the um, you can't really see the nodes on the soft wood, so I I couldn't really show you where where you would actually cut it. So the next slide. So in this, I point I've got it pointed out where you where you would cut. So you would cut the stem below the node like right up next to it at a 45 degree angle. And the 45 degree angle is important because you're exposing more of the internal structure of the plant to the, the water, to the soil, to the rooting hormone or whatever you're gonna put it in or whatever you're gonna put on it. Because if you cut it straight across, um, it'll still work, but you're reducing your your chances. So if you cut at a 45 degree angle, you're giving yourself more of a chance of something uh, of the plant surviving and rooting. Um, then you're going to remove the leaves from at least you're going to have at least two nodes exposed. But you d and you know you so for example, and like I said, I'm going to do this closer up. But you're going to cut, and then you would take off these and these, and you and you want at least two, three is better, but you don't really need more than three nodes exposed. And the top of your plant, you don't want a whole lot of vegetation either, because you're going to stress the plant out because it's going to spend more time trying to transpire, which is the what plants they don't breathe, they transpire. So the plant will spend more time transpiring and trying to photo, uh, photosynthesize instead of producing roots. So you, you would remove a lot of the top uh, leaves as well. And like I said, I'm gonna show you all this up close. And then once you've removed the, it, you know, the bottom two sets of leaves uh, and removed a lot of the top, top growth, to, like I said, not stress the plant out. You're gonna either put it in water. So just, you know, like you've seen your mother, your grandmother do, you know, just stick it in water and wait. Or you could put it in the soil and let it, let it uh, root. And after, you know, a couple of days, you're gonna tug on it. Don't yank it, but you're gonna tug on it. And if there's resist, if there's no resistance, leave it alone. If there's a little resistance, you know you have roots, and then you know you've uh, succeeded. So next slide. 
Okay, so basil. I was not able to get any basil, but I have all the other uh, other herbs, and I have oregano instead of basil, but you take the cuttings the same way. Um, so basil, osimum basilicum, um, everybody knows what basil looks like, um, and all the tips that you're going to get today work on basil in the exact same way. Just uh, basil stems don't usually get as woody as except towards the end of the life of the plant. So next slide. And for who said they could only find basil leaves, that's fine. Like I said, the the tips work for, for all herbs that we're going to use. So once you once you learn how to do this, it'll work for almost everything. There are a couple that they won't work for, but um, once it, but once you look at the uh, the plant structure, you'll understand why. Like cilantro, cilantro doesn't have nodes on the stem, so you can't really propagate it by cutting. You would just grow more. Um, and dill is the same. So mint. So we got mint. Um, there are different kinds of mint. There's peppermint, spearmint. Um, you know that you have something from the mint family because it has a square stem. And when I say square, I mean it has four sides and corners. Um, also, and mint propagates fairly easily, fairly quickly. So also these, uh, all the tips work for that as well. Next, we got oregano, which I've shown you already, but we got this one has, you can tell, has been fairly pro prolific. Um, and I think this is Greek oregano. And we've got next, we got rosemary. Next, oh yeah, there we go. So we got rosemary. It looks kind of like a pine tree. Um, rosemary, you can grow indoors, but you're unless you live somewhere where it gets uh, below the ground freezes, you can grow it outside in the ground, and it'll be fine. Um, so you can grow it in a pot, but rosemary is one of the herbs that would do better in the ground. And Oh, and I can see if you can, I'm not sure if you can tell up close, but the ends here look like wood. Like, and then we've got, and like I said, I'll show you uh, later. And then we've got the soft wood, which, you know, is flexible. And the hard wood looks like wood. And we've got sage. Oh. Sage. There we go. And sage is really easy to see the nodes because there's one here, there's one here. Um, and time. And one thing that you want to make sure when you're propagating your herbs. So you don't propagate ones with flowers. You can, but it's better not to. So here's time, which is very difficult to see because they're very thin. And here's one that's flower dirty. All right, so so those, yeah, so we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna substitute the oregano for the basil, but we're gonna go through and uh, and take cuttings. So now I'm gonna split. Okay. All right. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna start with the mint just because it's easier to see, or at least I think it's easier to see. All right. So 
So this is mint. It's got a square stem, and you can see that it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes. And as I said before, nodes are where the leaves come out. So in this in this instance, yeah, I'm going to cut the end. And like I said, you can cut at a 45 degree. I use scissors. Some people use razor blades. I have a tendency to cut myself, and I learned how to do it with scissors, so I use scissors. But you, uh, and you check the ends. If the ends don't look light green and, and moist and watery, cut them, cut them off. And when you get your herbs home, that's a that's kind of the first thing you should do is cut the ends. Even if you don't use them right away, cut the ends, like I said, at a 45 degree angle, and then stick them in uh, some water until you get ready to use them. So I'm going to take off the bottom leaves, and these are kind of stubborn, so I'm going to cut them off. But most of the time, you can just pull them off. Uh, so, oops, cut them off. So that's one, two, and you don't want to leave a whole lot of space between the the bottom node and the cut. Um, it's better if you do it closer to the node. But in this case, yeah, I'll just do it. Yeah. So here's one. Here's so here's one, two. I'm gonna do three on this one just just because so you're gonna cut those off as well. And when you take your cuttings, do it around the same time that you're gonna you're gonna eat, or soon, or you know, close to the time you're gonna eat, because there's no reason to throw all this stuff away either. Use it. Let me put this over here so I can get a little bit closer. All right. So now I've got one, two, three, four, and then these two, these top leaves. We don't need all this. We only need about, we only need this one. Because we can take another cut from this. So we're going to cut it at the top right above where the leaves come out. And that doesn't matter if it's at a 45 degree angle or not. So this is so this is the cutting that we have. Oops. Yeah. Oops. I'm trying to get in front of the camera and I'm missing it. There we go. So this is our cutting. And you're going to take that and stick it in some water, or you're going to stick it in some soil. So in this case, I'm going to take my self-watering planter and pop it in there. I'm going to push it down so that more of the stem is touching it, touching the soil, and just leave it there. Um, if you put it in water, make sure that none of the leaves touch the water. Because if the leaves touch the water, they're going to start to rot, and it's going to get nasty. So how did I make the self-watering planter? Um, there's a, actually, there's a blog post about it um, on our website, blackchurchfoodsecurity.net uh, black slash blog, and you can find it there. Um, it's called Reduce, Reuse, Recycling in the Garden. Um, and we talked about it last month at our uh, DIY session. Yeah, so right. a video will be out soon. Uh, we'll we'll unload the videos from April um, to show that. And Josie, they're asking too. Yeah. Can you show like the cut end to the screen when you finish um, doing your masterpiece? They want to see the other end where you cut it to. Okay, so this you know I took a, a cutting off. So that piece that I first showed you, I took two cuttings off of it. This one is kind of small but it can still work because there's two 
nodes. I could I could also take these off, um, but I'm not going to. Um, and if you're something that they do in commercial uh, greenhouses, is you would cut these in half just to reduce the stress on the plant. Um, but you you know you want to have something up here because once the roots establish, you want the plant to start growing on its own. So in this one, I just cut it. Uh, thing. Oops. Hold on. I found my spawn and I moved. So you're going to cut at a 45 degree angle. And I don't know if you can see that. Um, and as far as seeing the nodes, wherever the leaves were attached, that's where the nodes are. So I'm going to plant this as well. Um, I'm going to do the sage now just to, just so it's more obvious what I'm doing. Um, so with sage, so with the sage, the nodes are further apart. And there are, you know, and where I cut, I intentionally cut this one this way, but if you bought it in the store, it would probably be about this big. So, you know, there aren't that many to begin with. So there's here. Let me put it down, move this out of the way. So there's a node here where these leaves are attached. There's a node here where these leaves are attached. There's a node here where these leaves are attached, and there's one here where these are attached. Um, so, I, this, and because I cut this, you know, a couple days ago, you, it's already hard. So, so here are the nodes, the two wings. So I would cut right under it at a 45 degree angle. Then I would take these leaves off, you know, dinner, I would take these leaves off. And these ag these axillary buds, I would take those off as well, because they're just going to rot. So there's a node here where I cut it. I'm trying to make sure you can see this. So. There's nodes here where I cut it and those where I just took off. And I'm going to take off these as well just because they're huge. I'm going to leave these two. And this here is the growth tip. So I definitely want to leave that. You don't have to, but in this case, I want to. And then I'm going to, you know, and like I said, you can just put it in water and just make sure that your leaves don't touch the water and how long is can you on the plate on the main okay can you all see it or no okay yeah. so with uh time in this case i'm going to cut this just to get the flowers off uh, so, time. How long do you keep it in the water before you put it in soil? Um, you're going to keep it in the water until you have a, you know, you've got a good amount of roots. Um, as long as there's more than just one root sticking out, um, you know, then it's up to you when you when you decide when you decide to put it in soil. And um, try not to leave it too long. So once it, once it looks like it, there's you know a lot of roots coming out, go ahead and put it in the soil. Um, so we've got time, and time is very difficult to see because it's so thin. Let me see if I can put it on the plate so you can see it a little bit better. It's just so thin, very difficult to see. But so with time, you would. 
same as before. You know, so here's a node where you've got leaves. So here's one. Here's there, there. You would cut right up under it at a 45 degree angle. And with time, it's easy to strip. You take it. Oops, I keep moving in the wrong spot. Sorry about that, y'all. You grab it, with, not pinch it, but between your two fingers and just run down and just pull it off. Um, let me do one more. And with time, it's not so diff it's not so bad if you leave more uh, leaves up there because they're kind of tiny. So I've got one, two, sorry, one, two, three, where the leaves were attached, and you just put it in your pot in your self watering container. Uh, can you see this? Probably not. Anyhow, yeah, so, oops, I'm get back here. Anyhow, this one's a little bit too tall, but it's in another self ordering container. Um, so, now, and now I'll do the oregano. So, oregano, it's, it grows very quickly. It's a pretty vigorous grower. And it's probably the easiest to root right after mint. Wait, cutting at the node and pulling off the leaves. Um, cutting at, what's the difference? Okay, so when you cut it, you're exposing more of the vascular system of the plant. And when you pull off the leaves, you're just exposing that one point on the stem. And that's where more roots would come out. And because you're cutting the stem so that the plant can still take in nutrients and water. Do you need direct or indirect light? Um, the cuttings, um, you know, direct light would probably be better, um, but it's not as important because you're, you want your plant to focus on making roots and not photosynthesizing. Um, yeah. And one thing I did, didn't mention yet. So when you, so when, once you've got your, uh, cuttings, you've got them in your pot, you've got them in your self watering planter, you've got them in your, uh, jar. If you have them in a pot or in the self watering planter, especially, you can cover them with a quote unquote humidity dome. You don't actually have to go out and buy one. You need some kind of clear container, like clear plastic container to cover it, or you can, uh, which I'm, yeah, so can you see here, there. So that's just, you know, and whatever it is, you want to make sure it's tall enough that it's not actually touching the plant when you cover it. And here's the other uh, self watering planter with a time in it. And here's the one with the mint and here's the sage just in some more. So now we've got oregano here. It's you know there are leaves everywhere. So on this one I could pro I could probably get three cuttings out of it, but I won't do that. Um oh and one thing I forgot I had it in my hand. Um another thing you can use instead of the plastic if you don't have a plastic container big enough to cover your uh pot or your planter you and with the water you don't need to do this but um you could or you can just use a ziploc bag and cover it up um and like i said make sure that the bag is not touching the leaves and, and you're basically creating a terrarium does anybody remember terrariums from elementary school wait so the so you so that Humidity, so the plant is still breathing, but that air, but that air is not being ink breathing. It's transpiring, but that air is not being lost. It's going to stay in there and keep it warm and humid, so that the plant can, you know, get its legs back 
and uh, spit out some more roots. So here we go. Hey, we Josie, Josie, yeah. Yeah. Real, real quick, um, my, my school didn't get federal funding, so I don't know what a terrarium, can you break down what you say, terrarium, please, for the rest of us who didn't get federal funding? Okay, so a terrarium is an enclosed uh, space where you, you put plants inside of, and the plants then, you know, they create their own uh, eco microclimate and ecosystem. Well, microclimate, not ecosystem. But so, you know, they continue to transpire. So, you know, carbon dioxide goes out, oxygen goes in. And because the um, container holds it all there, it just keeps cycling. The atmosphere, the atmosphere uh, on Earth keeps, keeps, the, keeps our air here so that you know, we can keep breathing, we keep breathing. It doesn't just go away. Or, um, oh, like rain. You know, when the water evaporates, it goes up into the clouds, the clouds get heavy, and, and the rain comes back down. Uh, it's, the same idea. it's the same idea, except you're doing it inside a jar or inside a, a container. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all, so when your plants uh, let out the oxygen, the the you know the Ziploc bag or the plastic dome will keep it there so it doesn't dry out, basically. Perfect. Okay. Uh, okay. So we got our oregano, and everybody can still see the plate, right? So, like I said, in this case, you could do. Let me see. Yeah, you could probably do three on this one, but we're only going to do two. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half just to save us some. All right, so we got two cuttings, right? So here, this one has already gotten woody from when I when I first uh, got it. So I'm going to cut that one right below the because here's the node. Here are the leaves right there. Cut it. And somebody asked if you could use the bottom of a plastic something. Um, as long as, like I said, as long as it's not touching the plant, yeah, you can use whatever you, you can use, as long as it's clear, yeah, you can use it. Um, you won't, don't want to use a milk jug unless it's one of the clear ones. Like you want something that's clear, not translucent. Um, yeah, milk doesn't come in, uh, the ones that water come in that look like milk jugs, you could use one of those. Um, so now we're going to take off our leaves. Um, and, you know, normally you don't see a lot of recipes for fresh oregano, but it's good for you. It's got all kinds of healing properties, and the oregano oil is supposed to be like one of the best cure-all. Okay, so here we go. We can see all these extra leaves now. We don't need all that. So in this case, I would get rid of the big ones and leave the small ones. And some, and once you start propagating stuff, you you start to figure out like what you like to do and what works for you. Um. Because everybody does it a little bit different. There are some things that are universal, like cutting at a 45-degree angle. But, you know, do you use scissors? Do you use uh, a razor blade? Or do you use an X-Acto knife? Um, you know, how much foliage do you leave at the top? Do you cut the leaves in half? Do you not? You know, that's kind of personal preference sort of thing. So, and here we go. This was an old vinegar bottle, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got, I've already moistened the soil. That's why I'm not going to water them on camera because the water's are, there's water already in it. So stick it in there and just wait. Um, and, okay, so this, and rosemary is the one that y'all really need to see. Because, and I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that you're able to recognize 
the difference between a soft wood and hardwood cutting. So I'm going to cut off one of these side shoots just so you can hopefully really see the difference. Um, and for the most part with rosemary, um, it wouldn't be a bad thing to have rooting hormones. But you know, you if you if you do it at the right time of year, you don't need it. So here you can see how flexible this is. And I know you won't be able to see it, but it's it's really light green. And it's really light green compared to this, you know, it looks like a tree. Which rosemary kind of is. Um, so if you ha only had this much, but you really wanted to propagate it, you would definitely use rooting hormone. But if you've got some soft, if you can get some soft wood cutting, get them. Um, let me cut off a couple more. Um, even, and even though this one is, you know, it's flexible. It still has this like wood tip. So we're gonna cut that off. And uh, one thing I do want you to notice as well, the rosemary, the uh, the leaves don't, you know, they don't necessarily look like other herbs, but they are leaves. They're not pine needles. And the you know the nodes are closer together than uh, on some a lot of the other uh, herbs. So you're going so with this one. So this one, the tip is it is woody. So I'm going to cut that uh, cut that off as well. And I cut can, it can right. Put it, hey Josie, can you put it toward the not your face camera, but the other camera? Oh, okay. See what you did. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. We got, it looks like we got company. All right. So, oh, it's an ant. All right. So the, so the tip, it was like, it was wood. So I cut it off at a 45 degree angle right up under the, the nose. And, and they're, the nodes are pretty close together. And you don't, You don't really see them because they're all turned up. And one thing you do need to remember is that plants have a right way up and a wrong. There's only one way up. So if you have a plant and you're not sure uh, why the you know why is this cutting not taking, it might be because you planted it upside down. The seeds, it doesn't matter so much with uh with cuttings it matters completely so like for one for example these leaves at the bottom i'm going to go ahead and take them off and then i'm going to show you what they look like up close because you they're dark green on one side and they're like almost white on the other side the dark green side is always the top. If you're not sure which way is up, the dark green side is pointing up. Especially if you take a cutting and you, you remove most of the leaves and then you're like, oh wait, shoot, which, which way am I supposed to go? Which, if you, the dark green side is up, that means you need to plant it this way. So here you can kind of see the difference between the dark oh, wrong and the camera, Wrong camera. Okay, sorry. There you go. Okay. You can see the difference between the dark and the light. Why can I not show you this? Okay. Okay. Can you see there? Sorry about that hard to do this when I'm looking somewhere else. There we go. Okay. Yeah. When you did it okay. like that. So you can see the dark and the light. So the light is the underside. So I, yeah, 
for rosemary, I would do at least three, not just because the nodes are so close together. Um, so we've got the one we cut, one, two, three, and you'll and you'll know because once you take them off, there's a like there's a bump on the stem. That's where the node is. Um, and you'll feel it too if you're not sure. So in this case, so I've got three. So I'm just gonna actually the way I cut it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, it'll be fine. So, you know, here I've got three nodes and then I've got this here. I'll just cut right above it and that'll be my cutting. I've got, you know, enough leaves for it to survive once it gets root. And I've got enough at the bottom to make sure it establishes root. And then, you know, stick it in your soil. go about your business and if you if you're if your cutting is a little bit too soft to just stick it in the soil uh use a pencil to make a hole put it in there and then uh close it back up so those are the herbs so does anybody have any questions right now like do you need me to show you something else um do you have any questions about herbs in particular um, and I have a couple of tips on my presentation still, um, just for, wait, somebody said something about, I missed it, uh, the last question. Um, I think it was Brenda to sew the cutting. Are you cutting above the nose? No, you cut below the nose. And again, just to recap a little bit, Josie, the node, and I think Michael Carter might have said the same thing. Is it right, generally right under the leaf is where the node is? It's where the leaf is attached. Like the, the leaf, leaf is attached. It's, yeah, so like the leaf is the, like where the leaf, once you pull it off, the node is there. It's, it's, the, it's where the leaf is attached. So it's not two separate things. You won't see the node until you pull the leaves off. Okay, got you. All right, any other um, questions? We, we're going to pivot to a, a Q&A portion at this time. Josie, this has been, I mean, somebody said, and I wrote it down, this was somebody just said, wow, this is so much more than grandma showed me. Uh, you do, you're doing something pretty sharp if you're walking us through with this information and the way that you're doing. So we are grateful, and there may be, uh, there may be some additional questions. We have a bunch of experts. I just want to shout out Michael Carter Jr., Emily, April Bolt. There are so many people in the chat room who have uh, wonderful information and insight and experience as well. And so, y'all, let's teach each other. Let's teach each other. But if you have any questions for Josie, go on, type those now. Let's get those for Josie. Let me uh, let me do this here. Um, can you share my uh, presentation face. one more time? I've got a couple more tips to oh, the share with everybody. All right. Yeah, cool. I've got a couple sh tips to sh share with people. All right. right. Um, one second. Here it comes. I think Siobhan is working on it. Yeah. It's just the one page. You don't have to share. And as we're bringing um, it up, uh, as it's coming. And I'm going to cut off this one with it. Well, it'll be fine. It's the third. Okay. All right. Siobhan, you should be good now to share the screen if you can do that. And even as you're doing that, we have uh, questions that are bubbling through. Here we go. Siobhan, your desktop looked like mine. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Valerie, um, you said you only have uh, pots uh, with the herbs. You don't need, a, you don't need very big pots. And you, like I said, if you can get at least three hours of sunlight, in your kitchen window or your uh, in any window um your herbs will grow and they'll be fine um like hey, what I about also, oh i'm sorry go ahead but the, ro no, the rosemary and rosemary is definitely better grown outside because it gets it gets big 
Um, and how much space do you need for herbs to grow? Um, you know, a four inch pot is fine. Um, and, and get one with drainage holes because you don't want to drown your, drown your herbs. And different um, herbs in the same pot is fine, Josie? Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, a lot of, a lot of herbs, uh, go well together. Just make sure whatever the watering requirements are for the herbs you have in your pot, they're similar. And as far, and as far as, you know, the, the similar similarities in the watering requirements, you just have to look that up. And bringing them um, inside at the end of the night, like a pet or something, that's okay. So take it out in the sun, bring it in at night. If it's, if it's requirements. You can. Okay. All you right. can. You don't, yeah. Um, with most of them, you don't need to, but you can. Um, like I said, if you get enough sunlight in your house, like direct sunlight, um, you can, you know, you can grow them in pots as houseplants. Uh, so first, when you get your herbs home, push the ends, 45 degree angle, remove, remove the bottom leaves, put them in water. And then cover them with the with the Ziploc bag or some kind of humidity. The Ziploc bag is probably the best idea. Try not to let it, you know, touch the herb too much. But like, if you got a big cup, put some water in it. Put your cut, clip the ends. You know, remove the leaves because if you don't, they'll get gross and nasty. Um, cover it with the Ziploc bag. You don't have to close the Ziploc bag. Just put it over top of it, like a, like a hat, like a toboggan. Um, and you know, it'll, they'll, they'll keep a whole lot longer. Um, then, you know, when you get, when, when you get ready to take your cuttings, do it around the time when you're about to eat, because you've got, you know, all this waste, quote unquote, waste. it's not really waste. There's no reason to throw it away. Just throw it in whatever you're cooking. Um, and Preserving your herbs, uh, you can dry them, and I prefer the, to dry them. You get a bundle of your herbs, tie them up on the end. Wait, what? You can freeze them, but you—it's you can freeze them, but it's not necessary, and it's uh, the integrity of your herbs kind of goes down a little bit. Um, so it'd be better to either dry them or. Uh, if you if you do freeze them, put them in oil first, olive oil, coconut oil, whichever you prefer. Um, and cut up your herbs, put them in like a do it in ice cube tray, and then uh, freeze them. And then once they're frozen, take them out of the ice cube tray and put them in a Ziploc bag. Put them in some kind of container, and uh, and you know whenever you get ready to cook, throw the, throw that into the pot to, you know, fry up something or to saute something or whatever, however, however you want to do it. Um, another way to preserve, uh, make kind of like a, a pesto type thing, you know, put a bunch of your herbs together. You can use the same herbs. You can mix them up, whatever you like. Um, the other day I made something with uh, garlic chives and some uh, walking onions, and I put in olive oil. A little bit of salt and some lime juice and we ate that with fish it was really good um and and you know once you make that you can freeze it and you know thaw it out and use it later um like the cilantro and lime rice they have at chipotle it's kind of the same thing you you know get a bunch of the extra cilantro uh but and so you would cut in stems and all don't get rid of the stem like you can eat the stems of cilantro don't throw them away so do uh stems the leaves, li uh, lime juice, olive oil, salt. If you want to add some other flavors, you can. Blend that up, mix it with rice. Uh, that's basically what the stuff is at Chipotle, and it's super easy. Um, and but you can freeze it and then thaw it out to you know have have later. Um, and but if when you dry dry your herbs. You hang them up like you would dry flowers. You would put them in a, like, basically put them in a bouquet, tie the ends together, and hang them up. Um, I, in my old apartment, I used to just, my, uh, the person who lived there previously had uh, plant hooks, 
So I would just hang them from, from those and let them dry. Um, but a good tip about drying herbs, uh, how do you revive herbs that have become wooded? You don't. You would dry those and just hope for the best. And eat, and you would, you, you, well, you could put, uh, root and hormone and try to revive them, but it, yeah, you'd probably be better off to try to find some fresh. Um, so drying herbs. Let me get this out before I forget. So you would bundle them up like a bouquet, tie the end. Um, but one tip that I learned from, I think it was Real Simple Magazine, or might have been Martha Stewart. Um, take a paper bag. So I'm going to, you know, you take a paper bag with the bottom facing down. And you put the herbs inside with the, the bundled in towards the bottom of the bag. And you cut a little hole in the corner and run the, you know, run the stems through there so that, and then hang them up. And then so that while they dry, they don't get dusty. So that when you're done, you don't have to, you know, like clean them, which is awesome. Because then once they're dry, you can just, you know, preserve, you put them away either in a, uh, a jar or in, a, you can keep, if you're, if you're super, you know, if you're super lazy, you can just unpack the bag and just leave the, and, you know, close the bag up, obviously, and just leave them and come back in a couple of weeks and they'll be dry, good to go. Um, and drying your own herbs, they have a whole lot more flavor than the stuff you buy at the store. And the and the flavor, for some reason, lasts longer. Um, you know, it's not going to last forever, and it does degrade over time, but it it lasts way longer than anything that you buy already uh, dried and pre-ground. Everything.